got this goofy little guy. All the detail work is done on the sides. We can start cleaning up the face. So I'm going to recut the mouth line. Just reestablish that. And I'm going to take a smaller butcher and reestablish these upper teeth. This just gives me a little more control because now it's much more narrow. And uh, oftentimes with the chisel work, it's more by feel than by sight. You check at the end to make sure it looks right. But you're always feeling your last chisel blow and where it ended up. So now we're going to pull that beard down, that lower lip, give it some more body. And then really define that nostril with the butcher tool. This is when you start to get fancy. So I'm going to go back to the cutter, give a little more detail to this nostril. bit of beard our beard, we've done a little bit of jawline, we've got like some hair there, we've got the eyes established, and at this point, um, depending on your muzzle shape, you can go for a dragon, right, this is the standard medieval dragon, uh, oftentimes the line work makes it look like a Chinese style dragon, but the line work can translate over to a cat, or a bear, or a wolf, or any furred animal that you want, so now we can establish any detail work that we want in this region here as our final heat for the eyes. So I'm going to heat it back up. I'm going to reset the eyes. Right, one last time with the eye chisel to get them nice and clean and really sink that in deep so that those eyes are locked in place and very dramatic. And that'll be all I need to do for the rest of the to give pupils and they're not both going straight you're gonna get kind of a wall-eyed frog looking thing and that can be a little disheartening for people but again just remember you move your chisel around to really push that eye into the shape you intended just take your time 
get it exactly how you want it. If you end up with a double strike, you get these cool little cat eyes, which I'm a big fan of. So I usually let it double strike either side and then reset the eyes. Then I'll come back in and define that brow right there with the cutter. Let's give it a little more detail. Um, and at this point, you can wire brush. Wire brushing is your final step. So depending on how realistic or how strange you want this to go, you can really take it in a lot of directions. So here we are. There's our jawline. Let's get this facing up. Okay. You can see the eyes. Jaws on either side. Try that again. So here we go. Got the eyes there. Focus. Teeth and the jawline. So we're going to take this section here and drill out the hole. And, uh, probably follow up with a knocker, door knocker. Okay, so now we're going to drill halfway through the jawline. Um, we've got a 3 16 inch drill bit and we're going to drill halfway through the jawline and then clamp it and re-drill from the other side to see where they meet. Got everything lined up here. Uh, with the forged material, you're going to want to be liberal with the lubricant. Make sure your material is cooled down. Um, because of all the forging, it's going to form weird carbides that can fill your drill bit. It's really good to just keep checking in and making sure that your drill bit is cold and that your drill bit is centered. Um, you don't want to rush it with your forged pieces because they have all these different shapes that are really good at grab it, grabbing onto your drill bit and uh, breaking them or preventing them from moving. So we're all lined up. There we are. Theoretically all the way through. Brush. Okay. So at this point, you can see light passes all the way through our hole, which means we drilled it correctly from both sides. And we still have material in the jawline to hold it together. So we can size it up, I'd say a little over a quarter of an inch, and that'll be sufficient. So we'll do that on the time lapse. 